is I just roughed out where I think the little figure is going to come. And Name clock, I've, didn't you? Yeah, so I've taken the, um, this is the reference that I'm using, by the way. So this, um, the one with the yellow uh, yeah. bite. Mm -hmm. What I've done is I've kind of moved that over. So right. that it, it, it makes that a little bit smaller because this is a very wide view and I, I think it's not so interesting. So um, I kind of zoomed in a little bit and also changed the, the, the kite to be up here. So it yeah. still looks like he's pulling him along. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea will be that this will sort of be the, the spray coming that way with a yeah. quieter area on this side. Right. Um, maybe a little bit of island sort of just poking out. Imagining it's maybe like mm -hmm. the Isle of Wight or something. Yeah. In that reference, there are some mountains in the distance, but I'm going to make it probably a bit more into the Isle of Wight. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Alternative, or you can just use clean film. Okay, for the because I'm only really going to use this in the water. I'm not yeah. really going to use it anywhere else. It's mainly just for the yeah. water, just to give me some effect in the water. Everything yeah. else is pretty much going to be painted relatively normally. Um, and if that's what you want to do, then that's fine. But um, I want my figure to feel like he's zooming along. So um, I'm just looking at the reference. So we've got um, the underside of his arm that kind of comes down here. This kind of comes down into his suit. And then this is all the, and I'm gonna sort of silhouette the figure as well. I don't really want too much detail in here um, because his sort of back is against the, the light. So I'm gonna keep it very, very simple. Um, his shoulder needs to come down a little bit. And then we're into his neck. And then I can bring his ear down a touch. There. His head kind of comes over. Put a bit more tilt into the head. Coming down into the neck. His shoulder. His back. And then it kind of comes down. Um, and then into his back of his legs and there's probably a little bit of harness he's sort of sitting on there but we won't worry about that and then we've got the hamstrings and then they've got these sort of tight shorts on knee and then his arm now his arm very foreshortened so what we're actually seeing is the curve of the shoulder, then the curve of the bicep and the, the tricep, hardly see any of that. And then we just see the forearm. So you've got to be very careful here not to, um, uh, if you want to make it feel like it's in front of him and not out to the side, you can't show too much of the arm. You can only show a little bit of it. So I'm showing a little bit of the bicep. So this is the outer edge of the shoulder, the deltoid, uh, yeah, the deltoid. And then we've got the, the bicep and the tricep here, which we can hardly see because it's hidden by the shoulder. And then we've got the lower part of the, um, the forearm, which comes down, and then we're into the wrist. So his wrist is kind of here. And then we've got the knuckles and the, and the kind of the fingers holding on to this bar thing that kind of comes through like so and i'm not going to worry about the individual fingers i'm just going to indicate that goes through there just make a shape for the hand and then there's sort of a <clears throat> thing on the end there and a thing on the end there where the, the the wiring's connecting to and then i think they also have this other I don't know what that is anyway, I have no idea. I don't even know what kites it, how you kites it. But, so. um, and then this thing kind of goes out that way. <coughs> and that'll go, <coughs> excuse me, up that way. And then there's some other little, other little wires that we're not too worried about at the moment. <coughs> and then the head. Oops, sorry about that. His ear's gone a bit all right there. Just clean that up. Just bring that down like so. Back of his neck's a bit too chunky. Okay, and then the legs themselves. So we see very little of this far leg. 
all we're really seeing is the calf, the calf muscle. So on the calf muscle, this curves outwards, this curves inwards. Um, and then we don't really see the foot because that's kind of on the board, which is going to be covered with water. This is going to be the front of the board and having that an angle. And I'm just going to lose that then into the water. So the water is going to cover that edge. And the water is going to cover actually most of this foot. So we'll just bring the water level up so we don't even need to draw the foot, which is handy. And then we've got the other leg, the other calf, which comes down off the knee. And then again, I'm just going to bring the water up so we don't need to worry about where the feet are. Like that. And then this comes all the way down. And then we're sort of into the edge of the wave, which is the trailing where the board has just been. And then this then is all the spray, which is going to come up. This is where I'm going to have some of my gesso coming through there off the front of the board. And what we don't want to do is bring the spray past this edge, because if you imagine he's going into flat water or flattish water, and we don't want to make it look like he's going to hit a tsunami. So the other thing I'm going to do is just indicate roughly where the horizon level is. So that's going to come through there. So let's try and get that relatively level. It wasn't very straight, never mind. And then I'm going to bring an indication of maybe a little bit of island. Just undulate the line a little bit. Can't really remember exactly how the Isle of Wight goes, but it probably goes something like that. And then I'm going to follow that through into the back of the spray just to break up. Really, the island is really just to break up all of this blue stuff that we're going to have going on. So I'm going to have to have put some different colors into that. Bring the island back over there and a little bit of the indication of the the um the height of the um, horizon and the other thing then to break up all of this mass of blues is i'm going to put a few more little kites just in the different in in the distance just some little shapes and they just need to be these sort of almost banana type shapes um and i'm not really going to worry about where they're going down to because they could all be behind this figure um, and even if you have some kind of in the distance over here to break up this part again you don't really need to worry about where they connect to i remember looking over at the um hailing island one day and i just saw this whole mass of kite surfers and the sky was just filled with all these little um arcs they're all different colours, so they can be really quite nice to sort of break up, you know, all of those monotonous blue colours. Okay, and then my actual kite for this main figure is going to be breaking out of the picture. Um, I don't want it to be too prominent. It's going to have a little bit of shape to it because I want to give the indication the wind is sort of catching it. So it's got a lot of, um, if you really want to get too, you know, quite detailed with it, there's quite a bit of markings and things within the kite you can sort of play with if you really want to. Um, but I'm just going to make an indication, a stab at where some of those are. And then just in a little bit of an indication as to where the, where some of those wires might connect to. Just remembering to make sure they kind of go over towards my figure otherwise it's going to be a bit odd and then maybe one or two coming back that way right so that's the drawing done next thing then gum arabic so i'm putting some gum arabic just out on my um palette just to make it a bit easier to get at it. 
going to use a fairly large brush and I'm actually going to bring it over to my painting so I'm going to be constantly going backwards and forwards and then I'm going to liberally splosh this on all over the water area. And this bit, unfortunately, is not very exciting, but hopefully once we've got all this done, it'll be easier then to play with the paint once it's on the painting. And needless to say, you want to try and make sure you use a clean brush for this. Otherwise, you're just going to be depositing color into the um, into this because this dries clear so um are you leaving gaps um Stuart, there, or not? there are a few gaps and I, I'm, I'm considering actually now that i started to put this down whether i should leave some of those and i think i might just a bit see what happens um not too not big gaps but it's just more where the paper's kind of got some texture to it and that's the bit i'm leaving okay uh, right, all the way through. Do, do, do. So right the way to the corner. And I'm also going to take that up into my um, watery surf, you know, the spray type area a little bit. Let's just scumble some of that on. Scumble, scumble. Actually got a bit of blue in there as well, which is not very helpful, but never mind. Do, 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 do. So get all that on there. And I'm actually just gonna scrub the brush a little bit. Probably not so good with a watercolor brush, but Hey, hey. Okay. I think that's pretty much <clears throat> it on there now. Just going to knock down some of those thicker areas. Right. So I'm going to leave that now to dry. And whilst that's drying, I'm going to just put on a little bit of um, tissue. I'm going to put a little bit of, uh, let's see, maybe, maybe a touch of gesso or, um, I don't know, maybe some low lying cloud across the top of the, the top of the, um, uh, island. I think just a little bit of variation up there. So I'm going to do some of that now. I can find my gesso. Let me just grab that. I'm just going to use white gesso for this. This is stuff we've used lots of times before. And the brush. So I've got clouds coming. Let's start off over this side. So we've got some clouds up here. And I'm going to paint them also almost like I would if I was doing it in, I don't know, like acrylics or or oils. So I'm going to scrub the brush and try and get some broken edges to the, you know, the cloud formations. So it's not just a, a big flat deposit of gesso. Uh, I might even bring some of that into there a little bit as well. So the clouds are bubbling along. Come a little bit higher there. Comes down to the top of the top of the um, island. 
need to go round my little sails, otherwise they'll end up getting disappearing. Just paint those around. So a bit more coming down to where my figure is. Let me just break up the edge a bit more. A few more spots. And the clouds up there. Yeah, okay, and then we're coming down to where my figure comes. And I think a bit more cloud up around his head because his head's going to be very, very dark. And I want to kind of pull the eye, you know, almost have a focal point. So let's put a nice light cloud near his head, which will then help to A, show the head up really clearly and give us a very, very high level of contrast, which will help to pull the eye into that section of the painting. So, um, down around his shoulder. A bit more back down here, some low lying ones. I'm not putting this on incredibly thickly, I just want it to just give me a change of surface when the paint hits it. That's really what this is about. So I'm not after rig big clumps of gesso. I just want some areas that we can manipulate the paint once it's once it's on here. Right. I think that will probably do the gesso. Clean my brush off. Put this down because it weighs a ton. The next stage then will be just to let that all dry, get that dried off. Um, so what I'll do is I'll give you a few minutes just to catch up while I dry this off. Has anybody got any questions at this point? No. Nope. Okay, good. Let me just get this working. Oh, if I plug that in. That was clever. I think this piece of paper's gone again. I seem to keep finding bits of paper that aren't working very well at the moment. Never mind. Hopefully it's not a big area of headedness. Hopefully it's just that top left hand corner. Let's just wet all of this. I'm just cutting round, round the sails. With the water. Coming all the way down into my clouds. Cutting round, I don't really need to cut round the figure. I mean, I could actually, let's just go over the figure because he's gonna be really dark, so that doesn't really matter. So we'll go over the figure and we'll come down, not quite to the horizon. Um, I'm gonna stop just a little bit higher than the horizon so that I can play with the color a little bit and make sure it's not too hard there. So coming down, 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 down. So the only things really I'm leaving dry are the the little kites. Everything else is getting water on it. And unfortunately, I'll have to forgive this left hand side. The paper's gone up there, which is great. Never mind. Okay. Right now, so whilst that's still doing what it's doing, I'm going to go straight into my cerulean blue. Nice big dollop of that. 
and I'm going to keep the let's see let's keep the right hand side this right hand side I'm going to keep blue or more blue and the left hand side is going to be, go a bit grayer so plenty of blue up there right loading up the corner now I'm going to start to dip into some of the gray bring some of that in around my kite as I said it's gone all over the that kite is pretty much in the area the paint's gone or the paper's gone but never mind so coming round and I'm just going to let the paint do some of this for the minute without um playing with it too much because as it starts to hit that that gesso it's going to do some interesting things and i don't really want to over paint it i just want to let the paint do whatever it wants to do there so i'm just going to get rid of these little splodges that i don't quite know why they ended up there and just break just using some water so i'm not adding paint here i'm just using water I'm just bluing out this bottom section all over my figure, the underside of the clouds, through to the spray and away. All right, I'm fairly happy with that sky. That sky is pretty much done. So, I'm going to continue the blues down now into the water, but I'm going to change the blue up a little bit. I'm going to go slightly richer, a bit slightly more green um, into the watercolour. So I'm using a bit of a darker blue, so like a phthalo y blue, and some yellow in it to give me sort of a richish green. And that now I'm just going to start to bring over my um, gum arabic going round my little board because that's going to be orange or red and i don't really want to paint that just yet i'm just trying to keep this fairly fairly shapeful some nice big marks all the way through a bit more paint Especially as I come near the front, need more paint in it. So plenty of paint down the front here. And as it's reacting with the um, the gum arabic, it slightly goes thicker. So let's just get some some marks in in here around my feet. All the way through. Just fill in some of those little areas. So this is where the trailing edge of the, the wake has gone. I need to curve that up a little bit, break into it. And then we've got some of that blue just up here behind my spray, which is going to come down. as the other side of the um, the other side of where the, the board has been. So let's clean off that brush. Just take some tissue, just get rid of a few of these marks, bits of water. Don't need these. Just lose that. Okay, I want to tip this a little bit because it's, I don't want the paint all to go too blotchy. Let's turn it, I'm just going to turn it 90 degrees and then tilt it down a bit. I want it to be a bit more horizontal in some of those marks. There we go. <clears throat> just give it tiny spray, not too much, just a little bit of spray just to give a bit more movement to some of these bigger marks. Just 
just let it do whatever it wants to do just for a few minutes. Right, I'm just going to put a tiny bit more of that colour through here. Kind of wash, washed off a bit too much through here. I want it fairly light back though, I don't want it too dark. I don't want it white yet. It needs to have some colour in it. Okay, that's fine. Leave it alone. Okay. Block that off. Just gonna smush up that edge a bit, make it a bit softer. And obviously I can only do this because I've got the the um, the gum arabic on that edge so I can soften it off. It's just sliding on the top of the the um, the gum arabic. So it allows me to just manipulate the paint a little bit with this tissue. Let's just do that. Soften off some of those edges. <laughs> Let's get the um, some of the figure and the, the kite in and start to establish maybe the first part of the foam and we'll see how we feel after that. For this then, I'm going to get a clean brush if I've got one. Just wash that one out. Got like a million jars of water here and all of them are dirty. Um, so I'm going to take some yellow, fairly strong yellow. I'm going to clean my palette out first because it's got lots of muck in it. So nice strong yellow colour. <clears throat> Let me use some capping yellow for this. That's a fairly full bodied yellow. It's going to be slightly green because it's got a bit of blue in it now from where I didn't wash the palette out properly, but it's mainly yellow. I'm going to take a brush and wet the shape first. So I'm going to wet this um, kitey shape. Just with some clean water. Try and keep the shape relatively accurate with the water. And then take my yellow, or greeny yellow, I should say. Ideally it'd be better if it was yellow yellow, but I'm just gonna load up that sail with the yellow and I want it relatively um, uniform in colour. So the edge and then I'm going to mop that, mop that up. Just shape up that edge a little bit more. Okay. Next color then will be, I'm gonna put some color in for the board, which I wanna go quite like the orangey red color. I think it stands out quite well. So again, I'm gonna make the board itself wet. Oh, it's got to be yellow in it, never mind, it's going to be orange anyway. I'm going to leave his legs dry. Just wetting the area where I think the ready orange colour is going to come. Dipping into some cadmium red. Into my yellows. So I want it pretty, pretty strong. But it stands out quite well. 
just touching that into where I've wet the wet the board. Just fill that shape in again fairly uniformly. The top edge anyway, I mean the bottom edge, I want it a bit more broken, but the top edge needs to be a relatively straight shape. <clears throat> That's fine. We'll leave that now to dry. Okay, my brush is off. Next thing then, I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a stab at a color through the figure. Um, I'm gonna leave his legs, his legs for the moment, because obviously this is still wet, but I'm gonna just, and his arm as well, but everything else is gonna get some paint on it. And I'm going to silhouette him, meaning that I'm not going to try and put too much variation in the colours, uh, sorry, within the body to try and show any form. Is that just water, Stuart? This is just water, yeah. Oh, just, okay. I'm just wetting, I'm just wetting the body. Um, but what I do want to do is within the silhouette itself, have different colours. So it's not going to be realistic, realistic. It's just going to be more colourful. Um, I just have a bit of fun with it, really. So there we go, all the way down. First colour I'm going to dip into will be some, a uh, little bit of purple. With some um, blue in it. So it's quite a bluey purple, or a very dark bluey purple. Start at the top of his head. Because the one in pretty dark coming down. So his ear is going to be about there. Down his shoulder. So we'll start him off there. And then I'm going to go a bit redder now. So just dipping into some cadmium. Cadmium red. Let's just make his shoulder there, coming down his body, a bit more red in there. Coming through the hole of his back. Coming down. Got some of these little I don't know, ropes or harnessy things going on there. Uh, let's go with a touch of, I'm gonna go darker now. Dipping into some Payne's gray. So in his lower area, gonna go much darker. Run that up. Comes down his leg into his shorts. Just remembering that the shorts we want to curve around the leg. So it must have a bit of curvature to it. Let's take that up his back a bit more. A few spots here and there, a bit at the top of his head perhaps. A bit darker. Down the core of his body, make that a bit darker. Okay. So I can leave that now to dry. Whilst that's drying, let's just mop up a little bit of this excess down here. So while that's drying, I'm going to start on the on the foam now. So the foam, as we talked about, is on has got some of the um, some of the gum arabic on it. So I need to take some of my 
greeny blue. Which is the phthalo blue with some yellow in it. And I'm going to start by just on the um, so here's the board. So the board I want to have a little bit of the blue, and then as it comes out of the blue, is then going to start to break and then get lighter and lighter and lighter as we're going into the foam. So I'm going to wet, say like a section there, not right down to the board. And then I'm going to take the blue colour from the edge of the board up into that wet area so that the wet area lets the paint um, move a bit more. And starts to break over. And the light and the darker blue bit at the bottom will obviously be the directional um, marks. Just going to spray that a little bit with some water. Just to start to get it moving. And remember, this is on gum arabic so it's not moving very fast but you'll start to get some of these things happening where the paint um breaks and does all interesting things like we saw in in the main body of water but you don't want to play with it too much you just got to leave it to do whatever it's going to do um and not fiddle with it because if you fiddle with it and you keep playing with it you don't get those lovely all those lovely little marks. So now let's do a little bit more of that same principle. So with the blue and the water, up around is, um, actually can know, coming back here a bit more, I need some more blue. So this needs to be pretty dark here. <coughs> so coming up, this way we've got a lot of blue as it breaks into the into the spray put some more water on there to get it moving like so just trying to be careful of any edges that i don't really want i'm just softly manipulating those just to try not to get too solid an edge once it's dry now coming with a slightly lighter blue now so i'm going to put some more water in this paint and perhaps a little bit of paint gray just for a change of color So it's a bit more washy, it's a bit more like a stain rather than a, a, a hard wash. And I'm going to then use that while this area is still drying back here to start to break up some of this larger area. And instead of painting it on, I've just loaded my brush up and I'm just going to flick it like that. Because I can't really define where it's going, but it will just give me that nice um, broken deposit of paint, really. Whereas if I try and do this with a brush, I'm, you know, I'll be there forever trying to get it to break and move. So just a little bit of flicking. Just going to lift out a bit of that. It's a bit too much paint in there. Okay, now some more of that grey. Slightly smaller brush, and I'm just going to start to bring that out from this area that we just painted. 
away and we're going I'm purposely trying to go away from the figure to get the feeling that the spray is going up and out in that direction so a little bit of that just to break up this edge here where the board has just gone through I might need to use some obviously some white paint perhaps at the end just to just to really break up the edge or even lift a little bit of that out. A bit more grey now. Same again. So some more flicking. Now, if you didn't want to get the flicking obviously over his legs, you know, if you didn't want any on there, then you could just take some, take some tissue. Just a little bit of tissue and kind of just fold it almost like a mask. And you just cover up the area that you don't want to get flicking onto. Um, and that will stop the paint from covering the area that you don't want paint on, just like that. Well, got a little bit on his leg there, but not too bad anyway. You could be a bit more careful than I am there. So, just want to get a teeny bit more gray, just at this edge there of the board, slightly darker. Because obviously, as he's cutting through the water, this is going to be pretty much the darkest area, the most densest area of water. So it needs to be darker. A bit more plain grey and yellow. Can make it a bit greener, I think. Just in here, at the edge of this board. lay a few bits of that over the top of what's already there. And then we've got also some other dark bits of wave coming down this way so I can start to get some of that in. Coming down. Just laying some of those dark marks in and then perhaps we could link that to that start to get this as being a face that goes up up into the edge of that where the board has just gone through and as it comes down down the wave on the other side obviously the lower part of the wave starts to catch more light so I can just dry and I can only do this again as I said because I've got the gum arabic on there so I'm just using a slightly damp brush and I could just lift off some of that paint just to give me tonal variation at the bottom of this um, at the bottom of the wave area I'm just going to soften that off. okay let's tilt that a little bit more Got quite a bit of glare on the on the board so now I think I need to block in some of the um, island, which will then help this area, which is going to be my main spray area, to show up. Because while this is still too light, this thing can't um, uh, stand out. <clears throat> so the island I'm going to use once I've cleaned it off. 
I'm using bluey, blue green type colours because I don't want it to be too bright, but it needs to have enough colour in it that it all um, that it will show as a um, an island. I'm just taking some cobalt blue and putting a bit of the yellow in it. Which is making a slightly greeny yellow. And I'm going to do this on dry. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the bottom edge of the, the island shape. So everything sort of from halfway up the island shape. I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. And the reason for that is just to keep the bottom soft when I bring this sort of colour on top. So this colour is going to be the um, the blues of the, the actual island. And I should break into that foam a little bit. There. And then <clears throat> I'm just going to wipe back a little bit to soften that off. Same over here around his knee. Down to where the edge of the foam is. Wipe back there. Keep that soft. And then same on this right hand side. And when it hits the water that I've put on, it'll just soften it off. But remember, I've got a few little kites there. Go around those all the way to the edge of my figure, down to where the water is. And then that's pretty much done. Okay. Right, I think it's time for a break. I'm going to let you all catch up for a minute. I'm going to put the kettle on while this is drying. Has anybody got any questions before we have a quick break? Just going to do this on dry, just to get some colour into the arms. Just try and keep the shape relatively um, as I want it. So I've got a dark pole that's going to come through there afterwards. Uh, we can get his leg in. And again, this is just on dry paper. Um, <clears throat> so just putting that as a flat, as flat as shape as possible, really. All the way down to the water. Same again on the other leg. Coming down. Just fill that whole shape in. Now, I need a bit more blue. So a slight bit of bluey green because there's a little sliver just underneath his leg. I need to just fill that in. just to show that the water continues through the back behind his leg. Just lighten that a bit. For the surf itself or the spray, I'm gonna put a bit more of a wash through that with some Payne's Gray into the greeny colors. Just going to give it a little, little spray on my spray. That makes sense. <clears throat> and then with the side of the brush, so just with the side of the paintbrush that's got this gray kind of color in it, I'm just gonna start to run that into the spray. <clears throat> almost like, almost scumbling the, um, the paint on purposefully not trying to 
um, control it too much. Just want it a bit broken. <clears throat> it's slightly darker again, I feel, particularly coming out from, from this area. So let's get a bit more dark down near the leg. The top there. Just gonna break that up a bit. <clears throat> Need to link those two shapes together. It's too white there. Okay. Now the top side of the the spray. It's probably going to need to go whiter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some colour now into the bottom of the clouds and then I'm going to bring probably some whites and stuff afterwards in the top of the spray to get that to show up. So the clouds bottoms, I'm just going to rerun some water, fairly clean water hopefully. That's a bit dirty. Just through the, mainly around the cloud area. I don't, I'm not too fussed about the rest of it. A bit dirty that brush, a bit yellow in it. And then taking this same sort of bluey gray color. Just gonna run a bit of that into the base of the clouds there. And also over here, around my little kites. Oh, that one's gonna be a bit obliterated. Into the figure. And then I need to take this color up a little bit into my gesso to form some of the cloud shapes. I can wipe back into in a bit. Uh, there's a bit of cloud there, a little gap. And then a bit more cloud around that little kite. Got another kite here actually. So let's get some cloud up around the back of him. Coming up. Take that up into the sky a bit there. Just soften the edges off. A little bit of slightly warmer colour. So some orangey, slightly orangey um, colours just to break up some of this blueness in my clouds. A little bit more of that on the right. Try not to leave an edge there, if I can help it. <clears throat> Soften this a bit.
this little magic sponge with some clean water. I'm just going to lift out a bit more light in this bit of gesso here. So this is gesso, which is why this is lifting out. Just around the head, clean that up a bit. Just to make that cloud a bit more prominent. more whiter bits over here in this gesso. Just to get that cloud to be nice and bright. A little bit through here. Okay, now I'm going to lift out now some whiter, lighter bits in my spray, which I'll probably need to put some white into just to get it to show up a bit, a bit better. To get the bottom edge there where it meets the island. So a few more spray marks, perhaps down in, down in here, Can lighten up some of this. Lift out a bit through there. Lose some of these straight lines. Just use my finger just to break that up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to put the um, some of the rigging that he's holding on to. I'm going to use some pretty dark colour, just some neat Payne's grey here, and use a rigger. Hopefully that is dry or fairly dry. So the the pole that he's holding on to is sort of there and get it coming through his hand to about there and then flick and flick to go up and then something attaching to the body here <clears throat> and then we've got little wires and ropes hanging down In there, a few little bits there. There's a nice dark patch. Just on the board, on the board there, which kind of just breaks up the, um, the shape a little bit. I'm actually going to actually do another mark shape here. <clears throat> Just to get the board to show up. Maybe one more. One more there. And then just get some darker marks into his suit.
few marks around his head. And then you can actually put a bit of dark up into the kite. Just to indicate where some of these markings are. And some sort of shape there in the kite. <clears throat> you can also just indicate where these bits of rigging and stuff are connecting to. <clears throat> We can have a couple of these lighter kites back here, just with some rigging. And onto those, I'm also going to put some brighter colours. So one of them I'm going to make red, just to get it to stand out a bit more. A yellow one as well. Nice strong yellow one. Or a couple of yellow ones. Blue one. Another one there. That's one right on the edge of the island. Perhaps a turquoise one, a few turquoisey ones, because they can always be nice, a bit of color. Okay, now a bit of white paint. Where can find it? I'm going to take some white now. Keeping it very neat. <clears throat> So just dipping the brush fairly neat into the into the white and just start to get some stronger foam marks in here. Make that a bit brighter. <clears throat> some energy into the mark making. Bit of flicking, it's a bit of water in that. Plenty of spray. A bit more. Got 
obviously the more spray we've got covers up any bits that we don't like. Can also put some few bits of spray just coming off of the uh, trailing edge of the wake all the way along even a little bit into his legs just to make it feel like the the water is actually bubbling up over the legs. Could even have a little bit of, just a bit of spatter for atmosphere here and there. Just tapping my finger with the brush. Okay. And then, oh, I've actually missed out a big sail at the top there. So let's just quickly put him in. And I think that one I'll make. Um, let's go with yellow, I think, a lemony yellow or a golden, more quinacrolone type yellow. Block him in. Against the color of the sky. Quite like that. I think maybe we'll have another one. More golden. The goldeny brown one. Let's go for one just coming from behind our figure here. Perhaps one more, one more there. Okay, and then we just need a few more dark marks. We're dipping into pretty neat, pretty neat, almost black really. Fairly dry on the brush. Just gonna put in a couple of darker marks on these. Just here and there. Let's put some red up here. Oh yes, red, lovely. Bit of red, just to brighten that up. Mm, splendid. Bit of red there. Bit stronger red on the board. Yes, it's on the board. Yeah. So is it leg up? More there. Mm, good. Uh -huh. And then finally, just, I don't know, let's have a bit of turquoise. Just a few splashes on his body. Break that up a bit. A bit on his shoulder. Okay, I think 